Okay, class. This will be a quicker video lecture. Kasi almost yung solution natin ay parehas. Except that banda dun sa dulo, no, sa overhead cost. When we are now computing for the departmental rates for assembly and finishing, magkaiba na sila. O kasi please take note ha, we are leveraging this tuon sa ating example or problem sa plant-wide rate. Dito naman departmental. Ulitin ko lang, papaano nagkakaiba yung plant-wide sa departmental? Kagaya ng nauna kong nabanggit, no? pag departmental, maaring meron tayong dalawa at higit pa. Basta more than one. There is one overhead rate per department. Okay? So, going back to our example here on Sunflower Manufacturing Company, we have the same data, but instead of getting one plant-wide overhead rate, we will be using those that, is, those that are available on the information. Na-curious pa ako. Those that is. <laughs> uh, minsan nag-grammar ano ako, curious. Now, please consider this one. Yung nasa taas. No, na pra, uh, sa information. Kasi ang sinasabi dito, di ba, si assembly department, significant yung amount ng labor. Kaya nga, ang cost driver natin will be the direct labor hours. Samantalang pagdating kay finishing, oh, significant amount naman ng machine-related yung overhead. Kaya nga, ang cost driver naman natin ay machine hours. O therefore, pag-compute natin ngayon ng overhead rate, Magkaiba yung kay assembly at saka kay finishing. Pag ang pinag-uusapan natin direct material at saka direct labor, parehas lamang po yan. Kagaya nung nasa solution natin sa plant-wide. No? Kung makikita po ninyo ito, kung babalikan natin. The same lamang po yan. Notice that direct material is 3 and 1,250. Sa direct labor is 1,875 and 703, 1,25. Dito, ganun din po yan, di ba? So, ang basically, magkakaroon lang tayo ng difference dito sa overhead. Kasi dito makikita ninyo, yung overhead component ni assembly ay 1,817,500. Samantalang doon sa plant-wide, magkano yun? That is more than a million almost, no? 2,187,500 as compared dito, 1,817,500. So, 1 million ba? Hindi pala, sorry. Na, na lito lang yung aking mata. 2187 ito, tapos eto naman ay 1817. So, around 300,000 more or less, no? give or take. Samantalang pagdating naman sa finishing, kung titignan ninyo ito, sa department rate under sa finishing, it's 1181250. Samantalang sa plant-wide, it was 820. So, mas malaki yung pagdating sa finishing. Pero saan ba natin ito pinipick up? Pipick upin po natin yung tamang overhead rate by getting the appropriate information. Ang sinasabi kasi, yung, yung cost driver natin sa assembly ay direct labor hours. O therefore, etong 1,890,000 natin, Gamitin natin yung direct labor hours at alin yon? Etong 52,000. But please take note, hindi na po natin ito total yung dalawa, 52 and 20. No, no, no. Sabi nga ng anak ko, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Why? Because hindi naman natin kailangang i-allocate yung, uh, yung overhead cost ni assembly na 1,890 doon sa finishing we will only be getting the overhead rate for assembly. And because mayroong ibang cost driver din si finishing na hindi rin papakialaman yung kay assembly. So here, kung makikita po ninyo yung ating solution dito, ano, yung assembly ko, 1,890 divided by 52,000 and that is your direct labor R yung ating overhead per direct labor R no 36.35 oh again kunin po ninyo yung inyong mga calculator para makasunod kayo ha oh the double check lang natin 1890 divided by 52 that is 
ni round off na lang po natin ito kasi butal po yung nakukompute natin. All right? O samantalang pagdating sa finishing, paano naman ito? O same logic. Kukunin natin yung manufacturing overhead cost ni finishing na 1.26 million. Ano naman yung magiging denominator natin? O dito, hindi natin gagamitin si 20,000 kasi direct labor are yan. Hindi po yan yung ating cost driver. Ang gagamitin natin is siyempre kung ano yung inasign na cost driver sa kanya which is the machine R. Sir, saan nyo po ito kinukuha? O ulitin ko lang ha, baka kanina eh natutulog kayo. Dito yan sa information sa taas. Okay? Yung cost driver natin dito. So, 1,260,000 divided by 80,000. Okay? O, kaya dito, makikita ninyo, 1,260 divided by 80, we will get, ayan po ano, o, double check ko ha, para sigurado tayo, 15.75. Ito, hindi na po ito rounded off ng 2 decimal, no? Kasi eksakto po ang kakalabasan yan. Unlike dito sa assembly, na itong 36.35 ni round off natin sa ni rest to des yung sa two decimal places. Okay? And then, o oh, apply na natin. Saan natin ito gagamitin? Anong magiging ano natin? Pagkukumputahan nitong 36.35 at saka 15.75. Of course, gagamitin natin yung actual. Okay? Actual production. Kasi ito based on budget eh. 'Di ba? Manufacturing overhead, budget na data yan. And then, budgeted data din. Yung direct labor hours at saka machine hours mo. For us to get, magkano? Siyempre, we will get the actual information, which is 25,000. But again, we have to be cautious because etong 36.35 ay per direct labor hour. Ilan ba yung, per direct, ilan ba yung direct labor hours mo? Sa isang unit. Ah, diba? Two hours. So, 36.35 times 2 hours no? times 25,000. At ito po yung ating kakalabasan na 1,817,500. Now, baka mamaya ang kunin ninyo pagdating sa finishing ay etong 0.75. Careful. Because hindi po yan yung ating cost driver. Ang cost driver natin ay machine time at sa machine time used per unit natin ay 3 hours. Kaya kung makikita po ninyo dito sa ating solution, o etong 15.75 natin times 3 machine hours. Okay? Times 25,000. Kaya natin makukuha etong 1,181,250. Now sa mga ganitong pagkakataon, ingat po kayo. Baka magkabaligtad po kayo ng figures kasi medyo magkamukha sila. 181. 1181. O, di ba? 500, 250. So, medyo nakakalito. Pag nagkamali ka dyan, tama nga sana yung nasa solution mo, pero namali ka ng pick up, o, dali tayo dyan. Okay? So, ingat po tayo. Now, syempre, eto na yung mga amounts na ilalagay natin doon sa initial table natin para makuha natin yung sagot for the, ano ba kasi tinatanong, yung total manufacturing cost natin, which is eto, ano? Alright? So, yun plus, ha? Now, dito, kagaya ng ginawa ko doon sa ating ano, plant-wide, nandito yung ating solution in case nalilito po kayo kung saan ito pinagkukukuha. Again, your direct material and direct labor as is po yan. Pero dito, oh, ito, for, for the sake of reference, ha, ang pinipick up po natin dyan ay itong 36.35. Ha? Lagyan ko lang ng kulay. Tapos dito naman sa finishing, ito. Pero sinolve ko na rin, what if, kung sakaling baligtad. Okay, si finishing yung based on direct labor hours. O etong gagamitin natin. Tapos kung si assembly based on machine hours, etong gagamitin natin. Kasi yan yung um, resulta no, ng ano ang tawag doon sa result. Kung ang multiplication, product yung result. No? Ano nga yung sa, ano, sa division? Yung uh, numerator divided by denominator. Nakalimutan ko. Basta, ito yung ibig ko sabihin. Our overhead rates. Okay? So, I hope nasundan po ninyo ito. 
So sabi ko nga, this will be quick because we have the same information. Okay, as with the previous video lecture. Just, it's just that we are applying a departmental rate for us, no? For me to demonstrate sa inyo yung departmental rate, no? When we are using more than one overhead rate, no? Instead of one overhead rate na applicable for, for all. Because in reality, that may not be the case. Kaya nga, di ba? Going to our activity-based costing, o dito nakadepende din kung anong, yung mga cost drivers natin nakadepende doon sa ating mga activities. Okay? Yun yung nagiging basis natin. Ano? Yung total overhead cost ko, pinaghihiwalay ko depende sa activities, nagkakaroon tayo ng cost pool, at saka doon tayo humuhugot ng mga overhead rates. Okay? So hanggang dito muna po, itong ating video lecture. If you have any questions on this departmental rate, please let me know and I'll be happy, more than willing, to help you on this. Thank you and bye.